Hey guys, Darren here from Champions Machine Tool Sales, the Haas factory outlet for Spring, Texas. Today we're going to talk about setting up your Haas bar feeder, both on the next gen control, the new machine, and also on the older classic Haas control. The Haas bar feeder itself has quite a few really neat features that I enjoy. Uh, one of them being a really easy adjustment of your tray. Basically all you're doing is cranking up and down to adjust the diameter of your bar so that it can easily slide in and out of your spindle. Once you get that V-channel set to your preferred height, you can manually slide your bar in and out of the spindle just to make sure you're happy with that alignment. The next feature I really like about the bar feeder is the foot switch down below so that you can actually slide the entire bar feeder out of your way. I'm gonna push the bar feeder away and you can see with the bar feeder in the rear position, it actually opens you up to your spindle so that you can unscrew your cap, change to your different size spindle liners as needed. When you're finished with that adjustment, all you have to do is pull the entire bar feeder right back into place, snaps into place, the control senses that it's in the right location, and then it continues to let you use your bar feeder. So setting up your bar feeder is a three-step process basically on the next gen control. Um, all we're gonna do, we're gonna start out by going to the current commands page. In the current commands page, if we're not already highlighting the bar feeder mechanism, we would navigate to the devices tab, then over to the bar feeder tab, and then we can start filling out some of this information. The first question it's gonna ask me is the length of the longest bar. Now, typically on this ST10Y, that'd be about three foot bars. So I'm gonna say 36 inches there. The push length is the amount that you wanna push out each and in, in each individual part. And uh, on this particular demo, we're gonna go about 825 thou. Your initial push length is gonna be the distance that you want the entire bar stock to stick out of the chuck. Minimum clamping length is gonna be the shortest remnant or the shortest drop off that you want to allow before it loads the next bar, pushes the remnant out and continues. And the parts counter is basically your ability to set a maximum number of parts. If you set the maximum number of parts as zero, then basically you're unlimited. It's just gonna continue to run all your bars until there's no bars left to run. Now, once you've actually set the proper height, you like your alignment into the spindle and you're ready to actually start the initial setup, you're gonna go below the pages that we were just on a little while ago and we're gonna start our simple setup procedure. The first thing that's gonna happen here is when we press the F2 button as it tells it to, it's going to go ahead and load, load and measure the first bar. So by pressing F2, that process is gonna begin. It's first going to make sure that no bar is left in the tray. It's gonna load a bar. It's gonna measure the length of that bar with the sensor. Once the length of that bar is actually measured, it's then gonna take us over to the next step. The next step is it asks us to adjust the transfer tray height, which we've already done in an earlier setup. The next step is to press the F3 button, which advances the bar into the spindle. So once I press F3, it's going to advance that bar into the spindle and it's gonna load our push rod. So. Now that our push rod is in the down position and it pushed the bar into the spindle, it's time for our next step. So right now I'm gonna to go to handle jog mode. I'm gonna be jogging the bar feeder until the face of the bar 
is even with the face of the chuck. I'm going to close my chuck jaws. Now, after closing my chuck jaws, you're going to notice that all of our steps are check marked, except for the very last step, which is setting the reference position by pressing the F4 button. When I set that reference position, when I press the F4 button, what it's going to do is it's going to tell the machine where the face of the bar stock is, and it will also feed that bar out to the first initial push length. When I press F4, it's going to ask me, do you, are you sure you want to advance the bar to the initial length? With the bar sitting out at the initial length, I would cut my first piece. Just before the end of my program, I would have a G105 command. This G105 is going to command the machine to bar feed out. Now, once the bar feed is set up and you're actually making parts, there's a couple notes I wanted to add when it comes to the usage of both the parts catcher and also commanding the bar feeder itself. So the parts catcher command is gonna be an M36 to bring that parts catcher up. It's gonna be an M37 to bring that parts catcher down. The note that I wanted to make on this video is that I like to leave the parts catcher up until the bar feed is complete. The reason why you want to do that is when the bar feeder loads a new bar stock, you also want the parts catcher to catch the remnant when it spits out that remnant. So you're going to notice now what we'll do here is we're going to go ahead and part this thing off. Now that the part is cut off, you're going to see the parts catcher stay up. I'm going to bar feed out to the next part and then I'll put the parts catcher down. So I've done that and I've kept the parts catcher up so that it will actually catch the remnant when the bar feeder loads a new bar and spits out that two inch long remnant when it's done. Now that we've shown you how to set up the bar feeder on the next gen control, let's move over to the classic Haas control and talk about that same process. If I go to the current commands page, just as we did on the next gen, and I start using the page up or page down blue buttons to go through the different menus, we're gonna come across the bar feeder setup page. So the bar feeder setup page on the classic Haas control is asking you for very much the same information. The part length plus cutoff is your push out amount, which was 825 thousandths. The initial push length again is how far we want to stick out of the chuck jaws, one and three eighths of an inch. The minimum clamping length, it again is our remnant at two inches. We don't want that drop off to ever get shorter than two inches. Now, a little bit different on the classic cost control because they'll ask us for a max number of parts, max number of bars, or max length to run. You only have to give it one of the three. However, if you give it, for example, 99 bars, is the same as using the zero in the NGC, meaning unlimited. Just run until you have no bars left. The current number of parts, bars, and length run is a counter. The way that you, you origin that counter is by going to the control pendant and using the origin button itself. So when I press origin, it's going to zero those counters, which is the best thing to do before beginning a new setup. Here's our length of our longest bar at 36 inches. Once again, the current bar length is actually a setting that's going to show us the length of the bar as it sits in the spindle while it's in production. On the bar feeder, when setting up a Haas Classic Control, you've got a list of Q codes that you can use here for the setup process. That list of codes is right on the bar feeder itself. When it comes to setting up a job, you'll remember that we loaded a bar first into the spindle. Then we measured that bar when it was even with the face of the chuck. In the case of the classic Haas control, we start out with a G105 Q4 to load that first part and also jog 
to where the face of the bar is even with the face of the chuck jaws. Our second step is a G105 Q2 that sets the reference position and pushes the bar out to the initial push length. So again, we can execute a G105 Q4, which is actually gonna measure the bar, load it into the spindle, and allow us to manually jog the bar feeder axis to where the face of the bar is even with the face of the chuck jaws. The next step we would then take is to execute a G105 Q2. That is actually gonna unclamp the chuck and push our bar out to the first bar feeder position. Beyond that, our next step is just to place a G105 by itself inside of the program before the end of the program, just as we've done before, which will continue to bar feed. It will continue to populate these counters as needed.